Welcome back to Dasar. My name is Darshan Doshi and as a part of the personal finance and investment podcast series, I have an incredible guest with me today, Jaydeep Doshi. Jaydeep is the CEO of Pro Invest Wealth and we are going to talk on a whole range of topics today, all related to money. That includes wealth management, fund management, and how do you gain financial independence? Financial independence is a very important topic at Dasar to the point where we even have launched a 90 day program, an online program, which helps you cultivate a behavior of managing your own money and kind of getting towards financial independence very, very quickly. So welcome Jaydeep. Thanks a lot for joining us on this podcast. Yeah. Thanks Darshan. Uh, it's amazing to be here. I know you have a wealth of knowledge, right? About um, investing, about personal finance, about, you know, financial independence. So my first question to you, you know, you've operated in wealth management for some time, quite a few years, few decades. Uh, but what does wealth management mean to you? And how do you figure out the value chain of this sector? Yes. So uh, basically wealth management is, uh, uh, first of all, is what it is not, is not about investing for short term. Okay. So wealth management for me is planning, execution and, uh, uh, and following up uh, with those investments. Also, one important thing for me is that wealth management is not a one-time job. It's not that I talk to you today, uh, I have these financial plans, goals and I do it on a paper and I tell you, yes, this is your financial plan. The wealth management to me is ongoing thing. So there are a lot of changes which will happen to your, in your life. And I want to relate to everybody who's ready to be with me for the next 20 years, 30 years, enjoy compounding, do the right things, uh, whether it is debt, equity or uh, any other investment product. But definitely not speculation. Excellent. Thanks a lot. You know, um, it's like fitness, you know, yeah. if you have to lose weight, if you have to gain muscle, if you want to be extremely fit, you can't just uh, do it over a weekend or once a year, Absolutely. right? You have to put in Discipline. one hour, you know, at least every day, if not three times yes. a week. Yes. And so personal finance and the program that I talked about, the 90 day program on financial independence on the sir is about this behavioral finance is about building that habit. And I'm really happy that you're speaking about this, which leads me to my next question. You know, uh, financial independence is something that is very popular in the Western culture, uh, is something that is becoming very popular in India right now. Correct. And uh, most importantly, what financial independence does is it gives you a lot of confidence. Absolutely. It gives you an opportunity to do the things that are important to you. Yes. Right. So uh, suppose, uh, you know, you're in the lower income or middle class uh, family in, in, an, in India, or maybe you're starting off your career. How does one work towards getting financial independence? Uh, yeah, so it's a very important question and very close to my heart also, because uh, the first thing uh, when I started my career, it used to be uh, equity markets about speculation and all that. And... Uh, it was never looked upon like an investment tool. A uh, lot of people used to buy ULIPs uh, as their first investment tool because they were scared that they would lose money in stock markets. And uh, I think that was uh, not the right thing to start your investment journey. You start early by doing small amounts of investment and with God's grace today you have a lot of financial products like mutual funds who offer you uh, professional management at almost negligible price, which is almost lowest in the world now, very close to uh, lower than the average price that is charged globally. So uh, long term wealth creation should uh, the, the biggest thing you have to do is start early, do it consistently. It's not how much money you invest every day and how much money uh, you know you would like to get on table every day. It's about doing a certain amount regularly for the years to come. So for my daughter, when I started, I, when she was born in 2011, I started small investments in mutual funds. And my goal was to give her about 4 crore rupees end of 20 years and for her education. So for me, the most important discipline that I am following and 10 years down the line, she would be 20 and I'll be happy to come back here and share the entire journey. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, this small saving habit 
doing it regularly is going to help me achieve my goals you know you've touched upon a very important uh, topic you know one of the concepts uh, that i've been following is uh, you know dollar cost averaging absolutely uh, systematic investment plan yes. or you take x amount of shares every week every month every quarter every Correct. year depending on the Correct. price of the share right and so this is again consistency and letting it compound over a 20 year yes. horizon yes. because that's where you really uh, make big money yeah. so first question you know when you say small amount of money how much should a person think about putting in uh, on a week by week basis and how do you deploy it right where do you deploy it um is it how do you think about you know deploying that capital you said you know yeah. this is 20 year horizon for my daughter's education Correct. with this much amount okay so i'd love to understand you know how this would change Correct. and you have a lot of experience managing other yeah. people's money you have a lot of experience to have seen different asset classes over the last two decades yeah. so maybe some thoughts on that so where i this thing came to my mind was one of our investor uh, he was investing about 70000 in a tax saving scheme since 1993 94 and uh, uh, when we saw his portfolio late in 2013 uh, a 70000 rupee invested every year uh, roughly in the month of april because he was quite uh, you know uh, particular about doing it every, in the first week of april uh, had turned to 4 2 crores 4 lakh rupees okay and i looked back and there were so many events in the last 20 in from 93 to 2013 uh, uh, one of them was kargil was then ketan parik scam the it bubble burst the governments losing power and the new one coming in and then some uh, so all these events were there there were scams and everything but despite all that he managed to get 17% cagr return uh, with just being consistent and that's what my entire aim and objective is and i would be happy if people uh, have a longer term view believe in india and uh, start with smaller amounts and especially early age because you don't have big amounts as in the middle class or the first time salary getters that they, they can stop start with as low as 5000 rupees it's okay to start uh, uh, with a smaller amounts uh, but it would be important because when you would be 30 35 who would have immense wealth in his hand because he would have done well in his career and would have decent amount of money in his pocket to invest and scale and you know plan for his retirements and thing like that so by then he would be knowing the volatility of the market and this is the experience that you have to garner and get so um, uh, the idea is not uh, starting early uh, thinking long term uh, as except volatility because if you go back in the history of us stock markets or anywhere you would have i mean every year almost twice 10% markets have corrected maybe 20% every once in 2 years and about 50% once in a decade so these events will come and go they won't come and tell you when we are coming and when you so just ignore that don't over invest don't start with equity market straight away if you don't know about if you know about a company and you know how to read balance sheets and you have pro- professional guidance it's a nice thing to do but Uh, following also one very important aspect which we realize uh, why this guy and that 2 crore 4 lakh rupees in 2013 is today 6 crore rupees okay so investment is only 70000 rupees every year which is correct. so uh, uh, important thing here is uh, that you don't follow your investments every day by looking at the prices of or the navs or the stock prices the returns won't change but what happens is the behavioral issue where you try and tempt to take decisions which are not needed at that point so go with small amounts do it consistently and uh, stay invested for long term don't over invest so that you have sleeplessness because markets are volatile they want they are not predictable they won't give you linear returns like a fixed deposit and that's how we should look at stock markets and investing but definitely one more aspect which i would like to join tell you here and the audience here is that uh, if you start early say any amount say you had to achieve 2 crore rupees and you do a Uh, you do it start today with twenty thousand rupees, assuming some twelve fifteen percent CAGR return compounding every year. Uh, but if you start three years down the line, you would need almost thirty thousand or twenty five thousand rupees to reach that goal. And if you start ten years down the line with almost five times more the money, still you won't achieve it. 
the reason the thing here is compounding happens only in the later stage of your investment cycle which is from the 10th like i told you the 2 crore rupee which was in 2013 and 9 years 8 years down the line it is 6 crore rupees so look at the compounding that has happened and uh, this is what we in india should believe in and not miss out on because uh, taking quick decisions does not mean that you have been a successful investor so two things it's a marathon not a sprint yes and second it's not about transactions and action yes. it's actually about patience patience and consistency and consistency uh you talked a lot about india and the us market now i think a lot of the books a lot of the knowledge online that we see is focused towards the us market there's not probably enough uh data or talk around the indian market right, right. so india today is at about just over 2 and a half trillion dollar economy okay. our us our gdp per capita is at about us dollars 2100 yeah. uh, right which is an inflection point yes. so you know india is moving towards a 5 trillion dollar economy we'll get there maybe not 2025 maybe 2030 but it's still doubling the economy so in the larger scheme of things do you believe in the indian story if so what are you expecting as an investor over the next decade so next decade is one of the most important uh, i mean inflection point as you rightly said for every investor in india uh, the reasons are there are not many countries in the world who has a young population and young population does everything that uh, economy needs to run uh, or you know to grow and uh, india is right now at about 30 30 one a average age population uh, you may just correct the facts if uh, you would be somewhere around that and next 10 years and i have generally seen people when they reach about 35 they have kids and they have uh, you know settled in their job and they are actually scaling in some ways or the other and they have savings as well uh, and they have aspirational also so all these things you won't get a us average population is about 50 or around that so you don't expect a person or my father today i buy a iphone probably every 3 years or 4 years but my father doesn't care or he is not uh, aspiring to buy the next generation of phones or anything so this is the theme that india will uh, have in the next 10 years which is is you will not find anywhere in the world to the about 1.35 billion people and having a young population you know and young population does great wonders i mean you would have seen how we transited from we didn't come to a laptop we straight away went to a mobile from insta like in, in the developed countries they had laptops and uh, computers PCs, and, yeah. and then and then they reached mobile and india directly jumped they didn't have you know laptop and they have straight away to the so these things will happen and can happen in a young economy second uh, thing which uh, you know is very important about india is uh, the you know globally we have uh, we have immense labor uh, at our, you know and skilled also and unskilled also so uh, with this i think covid which uh, you know uh, has taught and when i talk to a lot of uh, ceos are, who are our investors and also uh, while while doing research and they do these multinational companies are talking about uh, you know having china plus one kind of uh, manufacturing setup so india definitely is not too high on the labor cost right now uh, we are not at the lowest also but uh, definitely we offer a consumption market so definitely it makes sense for these companies to set up a plant in india and i think that will generate lot of employment and like we had last 10 years of consumption theme you know, or you know consumption burst or what you can say in india uh, because of the per capita earning going up i think in the next 10 years with the manufacturing also contributing which was almost very minimal compared to what global standards are or global uh, leaders were doing we should be doing reasonably well from that end also and uh, with the growing economy we our per capita income with uh, 5000 dollar and is much achievable but only thing is i don't know how to draw a date and all but it may happen i would like to just give you one example we had invested in a digital marketing company we said things are moving from print to uh, you know digital now and definitely 5 years down the line uh, this thing will get big for us but uh, with the uh, with the with covid happening uh, what we had expected in 5 years happened actually in 2 years so same thing what jio did in india if you can see we could never imagine india 
getting the, every guy getting a mobile phone and understanding how to use data and making sense out of it a lot of people are doing businesses from that so i think this story has very little legs to fail you know i mean it's definitely we are there is the risk reward is more favorable is what i can say my question to you is you know fixed deposits has been the de facto investment vehicle for a very long period of time you know if you see my parents our parents generation Uh, they would put in a significant amount of money in fixed deposits but with you know fixed deposit rates going as low as 6% yeah. um and on the other side stock markets you know yeah. making so much fun uh, or having so much fun in the last okay. 12 months um how do you view fixed deposits as a as an instrument for investment yeah so lower cost is good for businesses generally to thrive if you see globally also there is so much money available at about 30 trillion dollars at zero or negative interest so definitely it would be out uh, i mean investing in debt uh, uh, with 5 6% especially with people having a background of having invested at 10 12% for a very long period it's going to be difficult but they'll have to accept it and that's what i want to be pretty sure that um, you know and when you see when you talk about fixed deposit you have to talk about real returns if inflation is lower and interest rates are six when if inflation is four and interest rates are six still i would say you would still do it for, to in uh, in order to have the right asset allocation to have safety to have emergency funds and things like that but if uh, inflation is at 10 and you are generating eight or six then it is very harmful and it's dragging you down and you would realize uh, only probably the time when you really need the money or prob- when or probably your retirement or marriage or whatever plans you have Uh, you know uh, the big goals that you have to achieve and it would be too late for you to understand that you have missed out on so 12 per you one should not go on 10% 12% or 6% he should go on inflation less you know so interest rate less the inflation and find out the real returns and it's pretty simple i mean that is if it's positive i mean it's worthwhile otherwise you are obviously degrowing your money which is very uh, harmful and india had a phase of i think Um, quite a long phase i think in the early tw- uh, 2020 uh, uh, in 2011 12 13 when inflation were high and interest rates were lower so these are very harmful for economy i think one has to but you have to get used to lower interest rates and uh, and when it comes to why stock markets are happy i mean if lower interest rate lower cost of money increases the profitability of the company because they can borrow at lower price and uh, invest and make more profits out of it so Jaydeep you mentioned uh, about the emergency fund you talked about financial goals like your children's education so can you uh, as a financial planner as a financial advisor just guide on what a average uh, investor or an uh, individual should think about from a financial goals or goal setting standpoint every investor you know who thinks about investing his money has to first take two insurance policies for himself one is he should having he should be having a health policy uh, and second is have a term policy both come at a very nominal price after that you have to think about investing and uh, savings and everything so when you do a financial plan you normally um, you know jot down few things like uh, your goals and you take today's cost put some inflation to it uh, and calculate the future value of any so more most uh, plans do this and then they reverse calculate as to how much money one would need to achieve that goal so by way of sip say if you uh, can do about say 30000 a month and if your savings allow you to do 30000 a month it can be broken up into different funds today uh, i would focus more on mutual funds because insurance is taken care of at a very nominal price and now here you get professional management through mutual funds in mutual funds first thing is you could have emergency fund created through that also so normally 6 month salary is what we say you should have as emergency fund and wherever we have done financial planning i realized that those who had emergency especially during the covid those who had emergency plan for emergency fund and i remember very categorically very well that there is sir nahi chahiye ye hamara salary acha hai and we both are earning we are doing well but when covid happened everybody was uncertain for few months कि मेरा जॉब रहेगा वेदर आई विल हैव माय जॉब माय स्केल लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव गॉट सैलरी कट्स आल्सो फॉर सम टाइम 
so at this time markets were falling okay and had you had your emergency fund finances correctly managed less liabilities then you could see the opportunity in the stock market this was why and a lot of clients came back telling us that sir could you told us to have a emergency fund now we can look at this fall as an opportunity so you should have the right phase of mind in always and uh, when you start investing in mutual funds you can ideally choose a large cap fund in the initially initial phases of your investing career or probably have a flexi cap fund where the fund manager is allowed to buy any stock from the uh, from 1 to 500 market cap so uh, this way he gets exposure to about 500 stocks and about uh, 50 70 stocks from the universe of 500 stocks other than that there are these hybrid funds also where some risk uh, some money is put in debt and some is put in equity this way you get the risk low and also the returns are subdued there all more important factor especially who do financial planning we realize that the dollar depreciates over a period of time and global lot of our indian parents send their students to abroad for education and they that's the time when they need big money okay so we do also to in order to hedge and you know just not bet on india because every market has some important role to play and certain businesses in india are not there for investors in you know for the investors and cannot be taken through mutual funds so mutual funds do allow us to invest in the global markets also so global fund especially a us dollar denominated fund can also do a good job we have seen that an sip in a us or dollar denominated fund over 10 years also does as good as it does for an in uh, does in indian in investments also so you should have a basket of investments large cap fund very clearly low risk uh, nifty hugging or it could be a nifty etf also or an index fund comes at a nominal cost liquid fund for emergency you know so that any emergency you don't have to look here and there third is having a flexi cap fund which takes gives you the exposure where the fund manager can small mid he does the job of choosing the best company out of the 500 stock universe and i have seen generally that if he has a broader universe he uh, he has a better uh, you know he is more equipped to generate uh, uh, say alpha over uh, in a long run because uh, there would be phases in market when large caps would have done well and then you would somebody would say my mid cap has done well and somebody will say now my small cap has done well so flexi cap gives you a flavor of large mid and small or even a multi cap fund will give you that if you choose one scheme you get almost a good uh, a good exposure to almost 50 70 companies listed on the exchange other than that i would recommend one global fund which out of my experience i have seen that um, uh it does very well also when i during the covid time we saw that the us markets or the developed markets were not they got impacted but they were the ones to bounce back first so they do offer some kind of cushioning and obviously some kind of hedging because in long run if say for god due to some reason india doesn't do well for a long period of time then at least some investments done globally will do well for you and that way you diversify also yeah so on this right you've mentioned how to think about it and you've given a very clear understanding of you know flexi cap uh, or you know the other type of funds but there are so many mutual funds out there yes um for someone who is not invested or who does not understand enough how do you go about selecting these funds yeah so it's a tough one and it's getting complicated day by day because finally they are the manufacturers and they have to get you know new schemes and new products uh, which can cater to different investors but like i said if you i mean uh, i will give you a very good example i mean which in out of a client of ours had invested 20000 rupees in a mutual fund scheme i won't want to name it and today uh, the value of that scheme is about 8 lakhs 20000 2002 october 2002 he invested the returns are about 4000 one for about 4000 percent that 40x money has gone up that scheme has been an average scheme only i have not recommended any of my clients that scheme for the last 10 years but still it manages to compound by 21% cagr so idea is you should not waste too much time in identify because every scheme goes through phases so there is no fund manager who will always be on top 
and by switching here and there they in long run you don't achieve much like i told you this scheme i have not ever re- recommended to my client but if i look back investor who bought it at 10 rupee any anyway, way today's any anyway is about 410 has done excellent and he is happy with that the trick is not to track it too closely believe in the fund manager give it to the bigger fund houses or the known fund houses be to start with once you get used to about investing and you know about mutual funds and you start reading and or you take some professional they will tell you which are the new ones which are coming and how they can add value to your portfolio but idea is to stay invested and schemes will keep the top schemes will keep changing so i uh, it's difficult from my side also because investors say that this scheme is not performing to give you a simple example a small cap schemes never did well from 2018 to 2020 but in the last one year they have done about 100% almost average all small cap funds have done 100% returns so these are phases and you have to go through a flexi cap scheme will allow you to have exposure to small mid and large so i thought this is the way to simplify things for a investor because i don't like switching you know just because today small caps are doing well and nobody knows 6 months ago nobody knew small caps were going to do so well so you should leave it to the fund manager and uh, just accept that your scheme won't be in the top quartile everywhere also one more thing which i would want to suggest which i practice in my um, uh, you know my profession is i don't choose one scheme uh, all schemes from one amc so that way because amc is also do have biases or institutions have biases like i have a quality bias i always like to invest in quality businesses i may not go in try out something which is not good in quality and wait for something to change so institutions also do have these biases so if you take uh, you know about four or five companies and create oh, you know a basket of it and let's say a large cap from one company a mid cap or a flexi cap or a multi cap from another a hybrid one it will do justice to your portfolio and in patches everybody will perform because fund managers should are human beings and everybody thinks that this is what will do well in the next 5 10 years and you know he may get late or early in certain decisions and uh, may get that kind of returns so you should just select few do it consistently and not keep hopping from the theme there because i have seen the top schemes the top 10 schemes which are there this year have never been the top 10 in the next year so most and lot of fund managers do complain that when they deliver 100 percent returns and everybody gives them money so obviously they are left with no choice but to invest in the same companies or you know try out new th- companies which they are not comfortable investing so this is a very good point right on one hand you talked about fund managers and they have to deliver returns year over year so they have to deploy whatever money comes, comes in there. but as an individual as a retail investor time is on my side right so let's talk about me um or someone like me who wants to deploy but in today's market you know the stock market is probably at an all time high yes everyone's made money in the last one year right and today if you have money to deploy i'm kind of wondering where do i put my money in so my default is i don't see enough value out there for me to invest in certain stocks so what do i do i don't mind sitting 12 months 18 months on that cash park it in fixed deposit even if it's at low interest rate and then when an event happens where 10% 20% 40% 50% correction takes place then i will invest in uh, the companies that i like in okay. right so that is my uh, approach to this tech driven investment world is there a better way for someone who is a retail investor in today's scenario to deploy capital yeah so you know very importantly is to understand what your asset allocation is if you have got some lump sum money today and you are already an investor and you have made some arrangements and this lump sum money you want to invest later it's all right but a new investor should not do all these things i'll tell you with my experience when i was in mumbai doing my job as a de- in the dealing team we used to have you know every 1000 points markets to go up we used to party and there came a time when every week we would have markets going up every week they used to go up 1000 points then we realized that this is not this cannot be done and once market hit 10000 in in 2007 8 and um, 
that's the time when everybody uh, you know i mean 2005 6 and then everybody said market 10000 ho gaya abhi isse upar kya jayega these were people who were there in the market for quite a long time but if you i look back today it is at 50000 so retail investor should do staggered way of investing and a lot of books also suggest darshan that timing the markets is impossible you know and most of the people have lost money so if you have the appetite and you know your risk and you have managed your liabilities correctly then you should invest and obviously as for retail investor especially always focus on good quality because if you see good leaders they don't change how many market leaders have changed you know in the past 10 years 20 years so they don't change so easily so be with the leaders stay invested don't try to time don't over invest also so if you have got another a big chunk of money say about a crore or so or maybe 50 lakhs and you divide it into debt and equity because most of the money is lost in timing the markets is what i have learned so i also don't when because i deal with lot of people every day for me to give a figure i am nobody to give you that figure and first of all these events like i said now digitalization happened so quickly which one would have said would have happened in the last next five years so these events keep happening and nobody has any control over it so you should have the right asset allocation fix focus on that not time it because by timing it you missed most of lot of people at 40 because this is out of experience i am saying lot of people at 40 don't say abhi ho gaya lot of people at 50 said wapas niche aayega to main dalunga maine i mean if you look back in the history of stock markets if one year market has fallen 50% and it has bounced back it has been never happened in the history that again it has fallen 50% so i go by that data and i tell people that 10 20% is the max correction that you can expect and if beyond that it falls i mean i am nobody to but data suggests that it doesn't happen so easily so you should keep investing with a expectation that this money could come down 20% and you would want to reinvest at that time so let's not sit entirely on cash because this cash calls i have learned in 2008 lot of fund houses sat on cash because their ceos told that this i uh, uh, bank uh, issues which had happened in the us lehman crisis which spill over and will uh, disrupt our country economy also and believe me no, i mean not even some decent none of the banks faulted in our country that time and nothing happened and then market went up six in six months market went up uh, about 50% and most of the fund managers couldn't deploy the funds money and for 10 years they were underperforming so it's a very a uh, dangerous thing a lot of people think abhi 52 ho gaye hai main pura bech ke baith jata hu cash mein but i tell them this is very risky thing you can do it for 20% of the money 30% of the money because if i lose another 20% from here it would be difficult decision for you to take at 60000 to come back and say nahi main wapas laga deta hu jo nikala tha 50000 mein it never happens so you should never do that and the behavioral part takes away it's not about you or me anybody you know <laughs> in that situation would not be in a position to take that decision so don't time simple. it keep it simple stay invested you know in long run how many market charts have you seen coming down in long run they have always gone up because businesses are not meant to make losses right. businesses are meant to make profits and the big businesses are there in the nifty 50 the top 200 companies are the best businesses that india has in the listed form so you have to just stay invested in them and the more the regulation the better for you look at what amfi has done uh look at what sebi is doing for all the retail investors it's doing a phenomenal job so we our in india mutual fund penetration is about only 1.5% right now can you beat it i mean if we have to be a uh, what do you say global model uh, manufacturing hub or you know great economy or a big economy 5 trillion 10 trillion we can never be here so events like these will happen lot of people said are lot of broking accounts are opening and they all will get stuck and that means this is the top for the market but that is not right always because they we are so underpenetrated that some point will have to come to the global average of 25 26 us has about 50% population investing in mutual funds we are at 1.5% wow so we should be somewhere near 23 24 so except that they like what happened in jio where you know everybody had jio in their pocket you know or they had the internet in their pocket let's not say jio but internet in their pocket had any country thought that india would do it so fast no nowadays you see 2 crore accounts opening in 6 months 1 month 
डिमेट अकाउंट बट दिस इज नेचुरल दिस हैड टू हैपन वी हैव ऑलरेडी एक्चुअली लेट नाउ वी आर कैचिंग अप टू कम क्लोज टू द एवरेज सो दीज इवेंट्स विल हैपन एंड वन मस्ट जस्ट स्टे इन्वेस्टेड नॉट टाइम मार्केट्स बट नॉट ओवर इन्वेस्ट वेरी क्लियर एंड नॉट लेवरेज स्पेशली एक्सीलेंट कोविड हैपन लास्ट मार्च ग्लोबली वी हैड अ यू नो मैसेव शॉक टू द फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स and the us government itself pumped in about 7 trillion dollars yeah. uh, globally different markets have either increased liquidity uh, or by you know printing sure. or providing some subsidies some sort of reliefs financial measures uh, yeah, indian government has done the same what that has caused is a lot of appreciation a lot of different asset classes okay. right uh, and it kind of still continues to grow so would love to hear your thoughts on you know future impact of this current liquidity that we have today yeah so uh, this uh, decision of us bailing out you know or printing a huge sum of money uh, was the most uh, turning point if you can say or more confidence building for me because there is something called as money multiplier every rupee that you print comes back to the system or it gets churned or exchanges hand almost 5 6 times in india and uh, globally also it's in us it's about 1.4 or 1.5 times so the job of a government especially in the pandemic time is to get inflation or get demand picked up their job is not to repay so everybody thinks 7 trillion dollars print kiya then they have to repay to some they don't have to repay to anybody none of the governments have to repay money to anybody all they have to do is get growth or get inflation and which is quite evident that lot of governors are saying they will allow inflation to go up and this is because they have printed so much money now us being more consumption driven they are you can see consumption picking up there in india they didn't give direct uh, you know benefits initially but they tried and boosted the economy who give jobs and uh, you know the farmer or the lower uh, you know uh, low skilled skilled workers unskilled workers so uh, they are, you know everything has its own importance and one thing which covid did and which most fund managers including warren buffet um, would have realized that when the global crisis happened and all the airlines were shut and warren buffet in his uh, you know recent age he said that he sold all the stocks at about 100 dollars or a very low price boeing and the uh, united airways and all and he said he never thought they could raise money so quickly or they could raise money first of all but governments bail them out overnight okay so the biggest fund manager in the world today is the government okay don't i don't think there is anybody uh, who's managing the, uh, you know the show as i mean they, they are on the job actually because they have printed money or they have given some stimulus so all they want is to get the thing done because they don't want deflation they don't want confidence going down because once that goes down it's difficult for anybody to come back so i think that's how i looked at markets when the initial thing happened i was also clueless but i knew that systemic systemic events happen and then it's not a specific event to india and i think what will happen to the world will happen to india also but the best thing was when i got to know that the us governments are ready to bail out now india is a 3 trillion dollar economy they are doing about 10 trillion dollars of bailout so it's huge and i was not surprised when indian great uh, you know companies got about 2 lakh crores funding from the global markets you know so i think the bigger biggest fund manager was the governments and i think they did a fair job and a lot of people didn't um, probably anticipate this kind of event excellent so this has been a phenomenal podcast jaydeep yes. thanks a lot for joining us again thank you thank you so much darshan i really enjoyed i hope i am added value to your uh, listeners and um, uh, if there are any questions anybody has any time i am happy to help them no so what we you know uh, like i said at dasar club we have a 90 day program on personal finance you know where you take control of your own finance and achieve your financial independence so would love to engage with you over there where our participants who enrolled in those programs get a chance to interact with you in a closed conversation so i would love to have that yeah i am totally passionate about this field and if i can help anybody to plan his finances well nothing like it i am always available for them 
incredible thank you thank you so, so there you have it uh, a phenomenal conversation on personal finance on financial independence managing money investing in stocks um how do you think about uh, debt how do you think about savings uh, fixed deposits and more i hope you found this podcast useful if you have like our youtube channel subscribe to our youtube channel go on www.dasar.in you'll find a lot of articles over there on personal finance on technology and otherwise i'll see you soon thanks a lot